All right, hello everybody. This is uh, Pounding Racks checking in, and this is the uh, daily driver burgundy truck named Patches. This is be uh, update number five. I shot one last week, and I'm glad I didn't upload it because I didn't actually have anything done to this truck at that point. But uh, today I climbed underneath it and removed the engine oil pan, and uh, we're going to clean that out and uh, get that all nice and pretty and then put that back up in the truck uh, so i just wanted to show you guys what you got to kind of do to drop a an oil pan on a ka engine it's really not that bad um you just got to have a 19 millimeter socket and wrench preferably on an impact gun like this one right here that's my cobalt that i've had for many years and the bearing's starting to go on it but i've had it for seven years now and uh you know it's one of those things that after a while they just tend to start to go bad but uh back to the engine here we got the oil pan sitting on the floor here and it involves removing uh some 10 millimeter bolts that go all the way around the perimeter here uh but before you want to do that there's two uh, of these on each side there's this cross member here you can see this cross member on the floor here. It goes across underneath it, underneath the engine from this point right here across to this point right here. There's two 19 millimeter bolts on this side and there's the same on the other side. There's no weight on it, so you don't have to really worry about damaging anything. Um, first off, I have the truck up on ramps and I have the rear blocked, so this thing isn't going anywhere. Um, so you start by removing all the 10 millimeter nuts that are around the perimeter. Um, easy enough, I just used a uh, quarter drive ratchet with a, uh, I doubled a couple extensions and put a long 10 millimeter uh, six point socket on it. And those all broke free by hand, so I didn't need anything fancy. And once you break it free, well, you know, once you get the cross member out of the way, take all the bolts out, the pan slides back towards the transmission, so it'll fall. You wanna, I split it up here. I put uh, uh, a, uh, uh, like a scraper here and just kind of broke it free and just kind of popped down. You can see they didn't really use any gasket material here on this thing, so it just dropped down easily. It will clear the pickup tube. As you can see, my pickup tube is quite nasty. So I'm letting it drip into the pan right now, so there's, you know, nothing on my nice 1800s wood floor. Um, but from there, you just pop the pan down, the pan will fall down on this sway bar, and then you can just proceed to slide it back and out, and then here it is sitting on the, sitting on the floor right now. So, uh, I haven't even had a chance to look inside this thing, but I do know that the chances of having plastic in the bottom of the pan is probably pretty high so rather than um, deal with that here I'm just gonna take this pan put it in a plastic bag take it to work with me and put it in the parts washer at some point this week that'll clear all this out then I'll take a like a grinder with an, one of those brown cookies and I'll clean the edge of this thing up I do have a paper gasket at least I think I do <laughs> During my move, a lot has gone missing. I swear I had a set of LED headlights for a buddy of mine, and uh, I couldn't find them. Oh yeah, there is parts of the uh, timing guide here. That would be a piece of timing guide. So when your timing guide disintegrates, it goes down into the pan. It is pretty much harmless because it is plastic and it's not really going to get sucked up past the, the screen here on the pickup tube. But I'm anal retentive, and I don't like knowing that it's in there. So I'm going to just redo this as nice as I can. Um, I'm not going to paint anything, obviously. There's, there's corrosion on this. But I don't want to have pieces of plastic floating around in my pan. So that's what I'm going to do next is clean this up. You can see the chocolate milk in here. It's going to take a couple oil changes after I'm done with this to get it all out of there. And I'm hoping that there's no damage done to the 
to the lower end here at all. You know, I'm, I'm banking on that it held together okay. Because, I mean, I only drove it for about, like, a mile and a half, and it never really got above the super hot point. It got high, but it never went into the boil over. And it continued to run, and it fired back up, and it ran till the day I took it apart. So, and the lower end only made noise for one day, and then that never occurred again. So, I think that I'll be okay. But I was looking over the truck itself as well, and it doesn't really look like it's in terrible shape. I mean, the frame has got surface rust on it. We got grass hanging down off of the rear end. Let's see if I can get this camera to focus. That's from uh, flogging the, the hell out of it in the field. Um, there's a video of that on my Instagram page. And we do have a rear main leak. That's going to be next. I figured that after I'm done with doing all the timing chain and head gasket work here, that uh, I will take the transmission down, put a new clutch in it, resurface the flywheel, and uh, it should be good for a while. And uh, then... I'll proceed to start addressing this nastiness, but all this stuff is already on the red truck and it's in good shape. So I'm just going to, you know, take the red truck apart next year and transfer all the good two wheel drive bits uh, to this thing. So we should be, we should be in good shape. I'm, uh, I'm confident. I'm not celebrating, but I'm confident. So we'll see how it goes from here. Uh, it's it's come apart quite easy. So usually when something comes apart like this, uh, easy like that, it usually means that it wants to go back together rather easily too, or it wants to live again. So I think that uh, I'm gonna coat, coat this with WD-40, put a plastic bag underneath it so it doesn't like completely and totally destroy my 1800s wood floor here um, and my first order of business will be to get this oil pan clean and then I can reinstall that because having that installed is not uh, reliant on me having the timing chain parts. It'll just make it easier for me to get the timing chain cover back on if the pan is off. So I can uh, focus on that for right now. And then my next order of business is going to be the cylinder head here. Excuse me. Cold. And I got the sniffles again. I seem to get the sniffles every year. I got to split the uh, intake manifold off of the cylinder head itself here because I, they can't machine it like this. But I figured if I get it split, I can send it to uh, the machine shop at some point, get a surface put on it, have them tank it, clean it. And then... Um, I should be able to run it as long as it's not twisted up too bad. It's all, I just gotta take the 12 bolts out that hold the intake manifold to this, and then the head's free. And then it's just a matter of having time and the money to get it over to the machine shop. Is this is a secondary project because I've got so many non running hard bodies floating around now that uh, I figured that this one would be a fun, you know, occasional project to work on. But that's how it stands right now. Um, in the shop, ready for me to keep working on it. So, yeah, if you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, just leave them in the comment section down below. And um, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And, uh, yeah, if you like what I'm doing, uh, and you know, check out my, uh, Instagram, which is, uh, rainmaker underscore D21. Lots of pictures in between stuff of what I'm shooting. Cause I'll do a video every two weeks. I try and do a video every two weeks and then lots of updates through the Instagram page. So let me know what you guys think and, uh, enjoy the transitioning weather. I'm enjoying my last few days here. Uh, before the snow really starts to fall but making good headway here so thanks take it easy now and enjoy see ya